everyone and welcome to Screams After Midnight. I am Peter, that is Tim. I almost said the wrong name. Jesus. Uh, the... <laughs> I almost said the wrong name. You, you gotta call me like a... We should have sounded like nicknames for ourselves. <laughs> like about the things that we are like or are good at or whatever. That That is a hint as to the movie we were about to talk about. Because <laughs> we talk about horror movies on this show and this episode is a winner of a Patreon vote every month on patreon.com slash TV. Our patrons vote up between four movies and this vote, the theme this this for this vote was... um. Uh, four movies that were already in votes in 2018 ah, nice. and it was like it was a second chance month so we picked four that we mm-hmm. thought oh these all deserve a second chance to be picked so we put them in a vote and the winner was the 1977 japanese film house not to be confused with the the american horror comedy house from like 1980 or whatever it was mm-hmm. but yeah so we have <laughs> we have house we'll start <laughs> spoiler free kind of <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't know how you spoil this movie, to be honest. It's, it's, yeah. it's a weird one. But we'll start spoiler free. We'll give you a warning in the middle before we get into spoilers, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, Tim, had you seen this before? Oh, yeah. Uh, I've I've uh, been a big fan of this movie for a, a long time. I, I bought the... I forget if I was in high school at the time, or maybe it was, like, early in college, but I, do, I specifically remember going to... Uh, movie stop, which um, I don't think they have them anymore, but uh, you know, for a while they had game stops and then they also did these movie stops, which were just like these big, you know, places where you know, it was a lot of used movies and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I remember just seeing the cover for House and being like, oh, this looks really interesting. And then uh, I did, you know, a little bit of research on the internet, found out about it, and was like, oh, this sounds crazy. And then I went back and bought it. But it, I specifically remember in my mind because when I bought it, the uh there's like this uh woman that you know checked me out and she looked at the movie and was like oh like uh i i've been kind of interested in what this is about like yeah i keep seeing the cover and it looks crazy and then like i went on this like big stupid rambly like (laughs) rant about like what it was about and like i explained like all this stuff i was like oh it's like so crazy it's like you know and then i was like oh blah 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 this that and whatever and then i I just remember like by the end of it after (laughs) i was like explaining all this stuff to her i just remember going "Uh uh-huh well okay (laughs) and then just be like (laughs) you know she just very clearly was just like all right leave now (laughs) you crazy person so I, I know what you meant, but you started that by saying, so this, this woman checked me out, and I'm like, oh, what are you oh, wearing no. that day? <laughs> you, were you looking particularly good that day, Tim? That's, that's great. Um, yeah, I saw some yeah. of that. I saw like maybe 20, 30 minutes of this, like 10 years ago. Oh. And I, just, I wasn't in the mood for it, right? Because right from Fair. the start, it's weird, right? It's, it's got a weird thing going for oh, it yeah. right, right from the get-go. Um, I always meant to go back and watch it, so that gave me the excuse finally to to, to see the, the the whole thing. Oh wow, this is your oh oh man! I just assumed you'd seen it before. Okay. No, no, this is, this is mostly the maiden no. voyage. Um, and and here's the thing too: it's like not ju- and and it's not just in terms of like plot that it's weird. There's also like a lot of really weird um uh, like visual effects and like you know camera techniques and stuff. Like, yeah, like, you know. Right from the opening scene, look, there's this, like, you know, it's, it's got this sweet piano score as if it's, like, dreamlike. And the, it'll, it keeps doing these these different things where it'll, like, it'll go to a still frame, you know, it'll freeze the image and then fade it to the next shot. Or it'll stutter the image, or it'll lower the frame rate, or it'll do a thing where it splits screens and then fades into the second one. Like, it, it keeps doing these weird things, like, right from the very first scene. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> what are we in for here? This is erratic. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some stuff that's very slapstick comedy. There's some stuff that's oh yeah. There's some stuff that's just really wacky, evil dead ass. There's some stuff that like, it's it's all over the, the map in terms of techniques. Mm. And sometimes I can kind of see why they're using a technique at a certain time. And other times I'm just like, they just couldn't go ten seconds without doing something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they have to do something. And on top of that, you've got characters. This is this is the characters. Name. It's a group of girls who are in the high school or or near enough. These are the yeah. names of the characters. Gorgeous, Kung Fu, <laughs> Fantasy, Prof, as in Professor, Mac, yeah, Mac. Melody, and Sweet. <laughs> These are the character names. Mac is the fatty one, although the, the definition of fat is a bit 
loose, to be honest. She, she's oh yeah, she, they act like she's like nine hundred pounds or something. <laughs> she, she, she is a mildly rounder than the rest of them. That is the extent of yeah. the fatness we're talking about here. Uh, yeah. But she's always eating. That's the thing. She likes to eat. So she's named after the Big Mac. Probably not, yeah. but <laughs> she's called Mac. Yeah, she she's the only one that like I, like yeah. I, I think when we think of Mac, we we think of McDonald's. So I, so it kind of fits, but hers uh, is the only nickname that it's not like outright like a, a word for what it is she does. Yeah. Also, I'm pretty sure the Big Mac didn't exist yet in '77. Oh, sure. Yeah. But, um, but I I kind of like it. It's very weird, especially when you're watching it for the first time and you're like, why do they keep like calling this person Kung Fu? But I actually kind of like it because I, I don't know. It makes it feel like a weird like I don't know, like almost like a superhero team or something where. You know, it's like, oh, we we got the smart one, we got the tough one, and like, uh, and I don't know, it gives you like kind of a very quick like insight into, I don't, know, I guess their personalities a little bit, or at least the kind of stuff they like to do. And obviously, yeah, uh, I, I usually say this every time someone brings up House, but I freaking love Kung Fu. I think she's the coolest, just the way she's like always just like ready to fight something even really when cool. there's like a door that's jammed or something like she'll do like a fly yeah. kick <laughs> and it always films it in the same way where the camera will start zooming into her like really you know kind of like yeah. you know and and she's got this uh, her own music that plays every time she's doing this it goes into like a kung fu track and what's really weird about it is this is a japanese film ja- kung fu is not japanese karate is that's japanese true. kung fu is chinese <laughs> so there's layers to this. There's layers to this word. And it's funny oh, yeah. you said that she, you think she's cool because that's literally one of the lines in the movie is she does something... <laughs> but even before they go to the house, they're, at, they're still at the school or whatever and she yeah. she does some sort of kick or move or something. And then one of the, I think it's like uh, the professor girl's like, Kung Fu, you're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay. Yes. <laughs> so the actual plot or what there is of a plot of this movie, the premise is that Gorgeous is kind of the main girl. Um, Horror and Fantasy are kind of the main two, but I mean, it's kind of equal to Kung Fu and a few others as well, once it gets going. Is Gorgeous is not going with, with them in the trip that they're going with, with their, their teacher, um, Togo, the, the teacher, who Fantasy has a crush on, uh, so they keep dropping jokes about this. Which, by the way, it's kind of weird that a group of seven girls are going with one male teacher on a trip over the summer vacation. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying, <laughs> a little bit strange. Yeah. Uh, but then that kind of gets cancelled because his sister that owns the place that we're going to stay at uh, doesn't, you know, she, she's, she's having a baby, so she ends up not being available. And Gor- Gorgeous wasn't going with them, though. She was going with her dad to somewhere else, but her dad shows up her, and is like, hey, I've got a new da- wife. <laughs> Yeah. yeah her dad uh it's uh he scores uh movies uh mm. and so he's like kind of like the, a world traveler and I, I think he just mentions like he just got back from italy or something and i i thought that yeah they said like they were gonna go somewhere kind of you know like a exotic or prestige like that and then yeah instead the dad's just like hey guess what uh you, you're getting a new mom yeah, you get a new mom, which I think is even just weird to think that to like a sixteen-year-old, oh yeah, you get a new mom. Like at that age, they're not a new parent; they're just like. Yeah, and I think they mentioned that uh, you know her biological mother has been dead for like eight years or mm-hmm. something, which uh, you know obviously that like stuff like that you know takes time, but you do think like you know after eight years, you think you would be like okay with your dad like you know getting out on the dating scene. I mean. Maybe it's weird if all of a sudden, I, I don't know if she had never met this person before. Like, it is weird to all of a yeah, sudden be like, hey, like, we're getting married. It seems like he met her when he was away, and then he's, he just showed up with this new, I don't know if they're married yet, per se, but it was like, yeah, you know, they're gay, engaged, whatever. But yeah. what was weird, though, is he says, oh, we're going to have some company, and she's like, oh, is that he or she? And she's kind of excited. Like, the, the prospect yeah. of it being a woman doesn't even bother her. It's not until he says, this is your new mom, where she's like, what? <laughs> so... She instead like shows up and she's going to go with the rest of them on their trip, but then they find out it's cancelled from the teacher, and she's like, "How about we all go and stay at my aunt's house, right?" And my mom's sister. I've not seen her in a while, and then she we actually get a scene of her writing a letter to her aunt, like in the next scene, and she actually says, "Hey, I offered to bring all six of my friends and teacher to stay at your house. I hope that's <laughs> cool. I know I've not seen you since I was like six. And I'm like, wait a minute, you you made this offer for your like." your big group of friends and a teacher to go and stay at this person's house and you've not even spoken to her in like 10 years what <laughs> well, 
maybe hospitality <laughs> you need I, I, something uh, different in japan <laughs> yeah. a little more uh, yeah a little more accommodating yeah no it means intrusive that's what it means to us <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so that's the premise to go on this trip to our aunt's house and then weird shit happens uh mm. and i'll just leave it there for spoiler free before we talk yeah. about specific scenes just you know do you enjoy the movie what do you like about it <laughs> well i mean uh yeah i absolutely love the movie i don't think that's any uh big surprise because it's weird as hell and uh you know it and it, like it, it's uh you know i, I mean i don't know if I, I feel hesitant if i were to say it would be necessarily a good movie uh, i think what's so appealing about it is it is so crazy and erratic and as you're watching it, it you're just kind of like astounded <laughs> at some of the stuff they're doing and um i don't know it, and it does feel it, like it feels different though than just like a you know like a bad american movie or something like um it, you know like a lot of the stuff uh that seems weird i don't know maybe you're like oh i don't know like if, is this like a weird like you know joke that i'm not getting uh or something well, but it's I, I, just so crazy if nothing else i'll say this this definitely feels like someone's vision it doesn't feel like the things that are weird and goofy or bad don't feel like they're weird or goofy or bad because the person making this is incompetent it feels like no yeah, yeah. they have this wacky style that they want to get on film they, they are intentionally choosing to make it this weird uh yeah. which if, you know so it feels authentic it, in that sense yeah, and if uh, I remember correctly from when I researched it, like, whatever, 10 years ago when I first bought it, mm -hmm. uh, like, I think there was something about, like, the uh, the guy, uh, you know, that, like, directed it. I, I think maybe he was, like, uh, in commercials before. Let me and... check the name here just before we finish the story. <laughs> uh, Nobuhiko Obayashi, if I'm saying that okay. right. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe he was like, I think this was his first movie. I could be wrong, but I, yeah, like he, I don't know, like was just a crazy guy and like in advertising, just, I think he made like really, you know, bonkers, bright, vibrant commercials and stuff. And he kind of wanted to bring that aesthetic uh, to the big screen, <laughs> which is probably, you know, I don't know if he just had like a lot of different ideas for, you know, oh, this crazy thing, this crazy thing, but um yeah, it's <laughs> there's probably like a lot that you could argue is you know bad about it, but it, it's definitely unique. Um, I can't really think of any other movie <laughs> I've seen like this, and you know all, all the craziness <laughs> from just really works <laughs> on an entertainment level at the least. As this is so so weird. I I I don't actually know how I feel about it. I don't know if I love this. I don't know if I hate it. <laughs> it feels it, you know, it feels bulletproof or sorry or more, more specifically it feels critic proof i i don't think <laughs> I, I don't yeah. think you can sit down and like critique this in the same way you would in another movie because absolutely sure. everything going on is intentional and it, it, oh yeah sure it, and obvi obviously sure like something like uh i don't know pick a bad movie yeah sure other things might be intentional like and troll two or something like it's not like that kind of level <laughs> No, but but that's not intentional. I don't think the, 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 you know the, the badness right, yeah. in that isn't intentional. I'm I'm thinking like I don't know, like uh, you know when you see Independence Day two, I I don't think that that's doing anything other than what was intended. I think that's Roland Emmerich's sure. movie. That's exactly what he wanted, but it's still it's still not good. I don't know why I picked that movie specifically. It was just the first thing that came ahead, um, or a Michael Bay movie, whatever. But this like it feels so different that it's hard to critique especially when some of the things that you might call bad in other movies like the weird effects or the weird whatever it feels like no 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 that is an intentional stylistic choice here and yeah. because it is and it'd be one thing if this was a common thing that people did and you, you could maybe have more of a basis for like well you know it, like it, but because it's such a, a standalone one-off thing it's like well i can't really if nothing else it was a unique experience nothing else has ever yeah. felt like this <laughs> <laughs> no, totally i i mean i've seen this like a <clears throat> like a number of times uh and generally it's usually because i'll have people over <laughs> that have never seen it before and it's like mm -hmm. a thing you kind of want other people to experience just so you know like you didn't dream it or something it's, it's like no like we gotta watch this movie and then 
yeah, it's always fun to see like their reactions. But um, I mean, there's like some legitimately cool stuff in it too. Like, I don't want to make it sound like, oh, uh, it, it's only interesting because it it's crazy and weird. I, I do think there are like some legitimate like cool horror stuff. Uh, maybe. <laughs> You know, it might be overshadowed by the style of it or, yeah, how, how it's represented on screen. But, yeah. I, you know, there's still stuff I legitimately like as well. What's funny, actually, is that for the first half hour, it doesn't even remotely feel like it's a horror movie. And not even in the sense where the yeah. horror stuff's not started yet. Because even in a horror movie where, you know, there's build up and it's just like meeting the family or whatever before the creepy stuff happens, it still has that feeling of it's going to go down that path eventually, right? It still has that feeling of, okay, this is the happy part of the film where we meet the characters, but is going to go down this path of horror later. This doesn't feel like that at all. The first half hour of this movie feels like some sort of wacky comedy about high school kids. I, I think there's also stuff that feels very, like, soap opera-y about it. Like, mm. you know, like, what, like the stuff with the dad and, you know, the new mom and when, you know, like, you'll see, like, you know, the, like, gorgeous will be all upset and, like, they'll be out on this, like, terrace or something. It, you know, it feels very flowery and, like, fake-looking like you would see on a you know, bad melodrama or something. Yeah. So, I guess we'll give the spoiler warning so we can talk about <laughs> specific scenes and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, full spoilers for the for the movie. I, I think, obviously, the, the implication is that, admittedly, Gorgeous doesn't just have this idea on her own, really. The, the cat is implied to have maybe <laughs> driven yeah. that decision somewhat mm-hmm. and lured her in. Because, yeah, I, I, that's the other thing I thought was weird is that so they meet at the train station to get on the train to go, and like she's like, "Oh, I'm looking for a uh, was it was like Blanche, I think was the, the cat's Blanche name." Blanche is a cat, yeah. Yeah, and they get on the train, and the cat's already sitting in a train seat, and I'm like, "Wait, your cat <laughs> got on the train before you? Like, <laughs> first of all, you're traveling with a cat without a box. You know, you put the cat. Yeah. The cat cats don't travel well. You don't. You don't just hold them no. for a trip. <laughs> it's, but like, uh, so that that was weird, but." So, basically, what you're talking about with this movie, outside of some overall plot beats to kind of tie it together, is a series of weird scenes where each of the girls, one by one, uh, is is killed, or more specifically, eaten by yeah. uh, the, the... The house. The house. Uh, or like, the, or the, the woman who left, the, the aunt, who yeah. technically died a long time ago, but is surviving because she keeps feeding off unmarried women. Uh, and you know, which is why she's so happy to see them because here's seven young yeah. women who have not, you know, not been married. Yeah, because you basically find out that she uh, was uh, like her husband or husband to be uh, died in the was it World War Two, I think. Yeah, it was World War Two, yeah. and then I think yeah. her mother or grandmother died in one of the nuclear bombs uh, in Hiroshima oh, okay. yeah. or whatever. Um, yeah. And that's where I'm like, is this movie got a message? Is it trying to say something? It may be, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, uh, probably don't think about it too hard because it, if it if there is a message, it's probably easily overshadowed by a disembodied head biting a woman on her butt. Yeah, like like the, the closest <laughs> thing I can get to in terms of the themes of this movie, it's about as you know, it's coming of age, it's sexual awakening, and it's almost like it's. Because obviously Gordas is kind of the main one that she kind of survives because she kind of becomes the new aunt. Like her aunt kind of yeah. embodies her. Um, and that, that, that's fine. But like it's almost like growing up has eaten all of her childhood friends and eaten, eaten all of the <laughs> innocence. And this is a stretch, but that, that is the only thing I got from it thematically. Because... Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know necessarily if the movie's going for that, but I could see you making a case for it. Yeah. So yeah, so the first death, if you will, is as you mentioned, the watermelon becomes uh well, the, Mac goes missing, right? She goes missing, yeah. and then when one of the other girls goes to try and find her, Mac's head floating around yeah. outside bites her in so the they, ass, and yeah, she she had bought a watermelon earlier uh-huh. that she's very excited for, and they uh, were keeping it cool down a well, and then when they go to pull it up out of the well, instead of the watermelon being in there. <laughs> It's uh, Max Head. And uh, I think it's fantasy that does it, because I, I, I remember, uh, you know, Mac going, like, fantasy, yeah, like, yeah, very yeah, creepily, yeah. and then... <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it, it's one thing to have, like, you know, the you know disembodied head or whatever flying around, but <laughs> it's just so funny that it, like, bites her on her butt, and then she kind of, like, turns to the camera and screams. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, you got that. I, I like how, like... Like, uh, the one point Kung Fu is, like, getting firewood or whatever, 
and the firewood yeah. comes to life and starts flying around and tries to hit her. Yeah. But because she's kung fu, she can actually she, she keeps hitting them away. It becomes yeah. like a fight scene where she's hitting all these these sticks away. Uh, that was kind of entertaining. But yeah. things get crazier. See, it, yeah. it reminds me like very. Uh, it, it's very Evil Dead, and, mm. and obviously it came out before Evil Dead. But it just reminds me of that kind of aesthetic where. Um, it, you know, it, it's not necessarily like a haunted house movie where there are ghosts and stuff, but it's more like, you know, these inanimate things coming to life, um, you know, uh, so then, yeah, you have stuff like, you know, the, like you said, like the firewood becomes, a, uh, you know, it starts attacking or like, you know, the piano starts attacking you, like uh, that kind of stuff where it's like the house itself is the danger, not necessarily like a specific spirit or entity or something. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about the big ones then. Melody, who's called Melody because she plays the piano. Uh, yeah. the piano chops off her fingers by, like, you know, slamming <laughs> the, the, the lid shut. And then she yeah. holds up her hand and her fingers are all missing. And for some mm. reason, she's not actually that th- concerned about this. She kind of <laughs> smiles when she looks at her hands. And her fingers are still playing the piano under the lid. Um, but then she puts her hands back in and then it cuts off her entire left hand and it's like just a, yeah. she picks her hands back up and it's just a wrist with blood coming out of it. And for some yeah. reason, she then screams about this. You know, her fingers <laughs> being chopped off were not much, not very much concerning to her, but her yeah. whole hand, oh, now we have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like so great too, like when she's like just holding up like her hand, showing her fingers and it looks like they basically just, I don't know, kind of like green screened, like... Mm. Uh, over the fingers or whatever I, I don't know if there's a specific you know word for that technique because you can still see like that they're there just the fact that there's like a layer of like something over them but yeah um and the, the piano eats eats all of her she's she, yeah. it basically you know it opens up the lid and then consume you know you can see her body going in and then there's like a whole section here where the piano lid at the top keeps opening and shutting, yeah. and you see like just random body parts, like an arm sticking <laughs> out here, there's a leg sticking out there. Yeah. The, the piano is there. That's, that's, yeah, and that's it, the scene. Yeah, and it's kind of hard to describe it, because I, th- I feel like if you say, oh, the piano eats this person, you know, you probably get a little bit of a visual of what that would look like in your head, but really what you're seeing on screen is like, this piano with like multiple body parts sticking out of it while like the camera zooms in and out and there's like these cartoon like kind of flash stuff like all around it like it's so much more visual and yeah, striking and, and I think the whether pia- or not you like it yeah i think know. the piano's spinning at one point as well yeah yeah like like there's a lot of you know crazy stuff like that and you know, admittedly, that might not work for some people because it definitely looks cheesy. But I mean, I love the, you know, it, uh, again, it's so bizarre and like unique, even if it, you know, looks like kind of cheap. I think it also looks cool and gives it like a very interesting aesthetic that you don't see a lot. Yeah, there's the, the pillow attack, you know, so there's feathers and pillows yeah. attacking one of them. There's, uh, the... yeah, I believe it's sweet. I think, yeah, it gets attacked by mattresses and pillows. Yeah. And then there's also one of them ends up inside the ge- the gears of the the clock. Yeah, I think that's also sweet. Yeah, because she yeah. ends up getting attacked by the pillars and mattresses, and then kind of goes missing. And then yeah, in the end, yeah, she you find her inside the clock. <laughs> yeah, eventually, because Gord just kind of gets taken over because she like gets enamored with all the ants things and her mother's belongings, and she kind of becomes trans. Yeah. And eventually, there's a giant head of her peeking out the door. It's a whole thing, and then. <laughs> I love Kung Fu's kind of demise because she <laughs> she, she does a fly kick and her, yeah. this portal opens up and cuts her body in half, but her legs still fly yeah. kick and hit the whatever it was she was trying to kick. I, I think it was the uh, so like a door. There, or something there was like, like a there was like a poster of the cat uh, and mm. the pr- prof you know says i don't know how she realizes this but she's like you have to destroy the cat that's what you know <laughs> is causing all this uh so you know kung fu goes to fight it and then there's a um like a lamp uh that's kind of hanging above <laughs> that starts attacking her and then ends up basically like electrocuting her to death and then yeah like she gets swallowed up by it but her she gets like kind of chopped in half but her like legs are still able to do like a kung fu kick outside of it and then <laughs> like destroy the poster which uh a- again it's absolutely insane and then yeah while you're watching it like you know the the film is like you know rewinding and like yeah you know zooming and sparking and, and, and then, then prof has this ending where the, the, the room's filling up with like 
well not water necessarily but like a liquid and i, I think i thought it was blood and yeah i think, was, I think you're right like it's probably blood, blood. Yeah. and she ends up you know like falling into it and like you know all, all the rest of it yeah you know, th- things get kind of insane. They they go kind of wacky. <laughs> I mean, it, it's already pretty wacky from the start, but yeah, it, it gets even more insane as it goes. Yeah. Uh, there's also a skeleton for some reason <laughs> that just appears. Yes, there's a skeleton, and it starts dancing. It- I mean, there's not a lot of these scenes, but like the scenes with the the teacher, Mister Togo. Oh yeah, because he's still meant to be coming for some reason. Even yeah. though it's weird that the teacher's coming to live with him at a house for you know summer vacation, and he he basically stops and gets a drink, and then he stops at the the, the watermelon stand. Yeah, you know, they they have a really weird uh, argument, which I assume that there has to be some uh, like you know cultural thing that, that we're not necessarily understanding, like some maybe pun or, or joke that doesn't make. Uh, sense because like you know they're fighting and like the guys are getting really upset and he's saying like watermelon and the guy's like I don't like watermelon and he's like well what do you like and he's like bananas and then like <laughs> the guy turns into a skeleton and it's like what like there has to be like there, there has to be some reason why this doesn't make sense I, I would assume <laughs> but yeah or maybe there isn't or maybe it is just supposed to be weird and there's, even, there's even weird little moments like they're eating watermelon and the Anne like is chewing on it and then she opens her mouth and there's an eyeball just, yeah. just briefly, <laughs> and it's like, whoa, okay, and so yeah, this is the other thing is that no one seems that concerned that Mac is missing, and they just kind of go, oh, she's around somewhere. It's like you're oh, at a house in the middle of they, nowhere. Where do you think she went? Well, no, they 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 say there's a potato field nearby, so they just assume <laughs> <laughs> like she just wants to go eat raw potatoes it, out of the ground. Even when the second person goes missing, they're still kind of yeah. like just blasé about it. It's not until the third person or they, they actually see someone dead in, in the clock where they're like, you know what, guys, I think we're in danger. We should start barricading the the house or something like that. Yeah. Not that does any good, but <laughs> like, I, I'm not sure if this is what they were going for, but they did feel like a little ditzy. So, like, mm. I don't know if. They were kind of meant to be like, oh yeah, these are like, you know, typical teenage, you know, high school girls that maybe, you know, they're they're not as concerned about what's going around or maybe they're like a little goofy or something. But uh, they kind of felt like uh, they're being portrayed like that. Yeah, I can see that. Um, So the end of the movie, all all the girls have been eaten and it's now now (laughs) gorgeous who the the aunt's inside or, or the spirit of the house is inside her now. Like, it's passed on to her. And... The new mum, uh, who wanted to come and see her herself, uh, to have a heart to heart, shows up at the very end, and she meets her, and she's she's wearing like you know a, a kimodo, a very traditional. She's wearing her mum's old dress, and they sit down, and she's like, "Oh, where's all your friends?" And like, "Oh, they've not gotten up yet." <laughs> yeah, <mostly. laughs> uh, I think yeah, she's like they get up when they're hungry or something like. Yeah, and they they basically just shake hands, and you see the sparkle in her eye that the cat had earlier, so you know yeah. like okay. Oh yeah, it's a recurring thing in the movie. Yeah, there's like these little green sparkles that you know, keep popping up. And it's like, okay, so she's probably going to eat her now too. Uh, and that's, <laughs> that's basically the end of the movie. Um, which, you know, like, what did it all mean? I, your guess is as good as mine. Yeah. I don't have a clue. <laughs> I don't know. To me, it feels like a ride. Like, yeah, I can see that. Uh, <laughs> you kind of just go on it and try not to think too much about it. Uh, but, like... Yeah, as weird and as nonsensical as it is, though, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't thoroughly entertained by it. But, like, because, you know, it, it is so crazy. But, hey, guess what? I like a little crazy. <laughs> oh, oh, I know. Have you made your wife watch this one yet, Tim? Uh, she'd already seen it. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, we, that's how you uh, knew it was true love. She'd already seen the house. And yeah. Okay. Okay. One knee time. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we we are yeah we watched it yesterday. Uh, I think it had been a while since he, you know either one of us had had seen it, but we both enjoy it. Um, there's always like stuff about it. There's so much crazy stuff in it. That I always forget things. So like, I, I was actually posting about this, uh, the, but there's a uh, one scene where you know that they're cutting to the teacher who's like getting some food, you know, on his way there, and he's like he's in the city. He's at like a little uh, like ramen stand, and uh, there's oh, like yeah. a chef behind it and then there's also just a bear that's right no no i'm glad you brought this up because i'd forgotten about it yeah there's like it's a close-up of this guy the chef eating the noodles and he's like oh very good yeah. noodles and it's like okay yeah. whatever but there's a bear behind him 
and it moves at one point. It's not even just it's yeah. like a stuffed bear. There's, there's a bear behind him, like moving his head, as if he's also one of the, the kitchen staff or something like that. Uh, yeah. And then there's just a scene of them like enjoying noodles, like they're you know they've, they've been starving for a week. It, I, I don't know. It's, it's so weird. Like I, you know, like I don't want to be one of those people that you know. I was like, oh man, Japan's so crazy. Like, uh, yeah, you because know, I, I feel like that was a thing that people used to always talk about. Like, oh, look at all the wacky Japan stuff. So, like. You know, I I just don't want to say that, you know, this is all on, you know, Japan for being weird or stuff, but I feel like, I don't know, maybe... I feel like that like reputation's all on this movie. <laughs> yeah, that's probably where a lot of it comes from. But, like, <laughs> I, I don't know, like, when, when I see stuff like that, though, I wonder, like, you know, oh, is a, a bear that works at a restaurant, is that maybe something from, like, a maybe like a commercial or like a comic strip that we're just not aware of. That sure, maybe it's that's a reference. Like a... Yeah, it's a cultural reference. To the... Well, yeah. not a cultural reference. It's a, it's a pop culture reference to understand. Yeah, so like, I, I wonder... Yeah, like, I, I wonder if there's like, you know, specific stuff like that that maybe... Uh, it'd probably still be weird, you know, to a, a Japanese person watching the movie, but maybe they'd have more context for it that it's not just completely out of left field. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm just curious. <laughs> maybe yeah. it's not. Maybe it's just super weird. I mean, to be fair, if I made a movie, it would probably be similar to this. <laughs> yeah, but, but but with less less salty. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> it's def it's definitely a unique experience. Like right from the right from the very first five seconds, it yeah. feels different because it has this weird style to it, where it's doing all these different things with the camera and the the editing. It's the editing really more than anything. It does all these weird techniques. Yeah, and and it's like really, and um, and it's not like hard, like it's not stuff that's hard to do, but I feel like it's stuff you don't normally see in actual movies, because you know there'll be like simple stuff where it just like rewinds or like fast forwards, uh, which do you know, do you know, know, obviously like, it feels like someone who just got editing software for the first time and wanted to do a little home <laughs> video, so they just yeah. put every single effect they, f they find in the editing software into like the transitions. That's what yeah. it feels like. Except this comes from a time before like computer editing software existed, so they actually really had to think about this and yeah. plan this out, and you know, like this is what we're going to do with the film. Yeah. Um, whereas now this is easy. I I can knock up half of these effects in yeah. ten minutes. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, not so much the piano eating the person, but the, the editing effects. Yeah. It's it's, it's a weird and, thing. And I think it is cool because, uh, like. You, you don't see a lot of uh like horror movies from japan around this time like you know because now like you know we see japanese horror movies a lot but you know they're usually from like the late 90s early 2000s like you know when there's that kind of boom when they were like you know bringing a lot of stuff over but you know i do kind of wonder like oh yeah like what was the horror scene like over there in like mm -hmm. the 70s and the 80s and stuff we, we don't really see much of those or at least hear about them that much over here um yeah, uh, <laughs> if they're all like this, <laughs> I'm I'm almost inspired to get a green screen after this movie, just so I can, yeah, <laughs> just just so I can be in the in the purple fog in the video, just yeah. rather than just being a box, I'll just be in the fog. Yeah, see, so we'll have to start calling you podcaster, and you go into a abandoned house, and you just see some podcasting equipment, and you're like, oh hey, and then it starts <laughs> attacking you. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Um. Is there anything else we want to talk about with this movie? I I feel like we're probably missing like a ton of stuff, but it's um, you know, I mean, it's similar to uh, you know, I don't know when you're gonna release it, so I don't know if we we want to mention the other movie that we just did the recording for, but yeah, yeah, these, these uh, will be all over the place, really spies. But I, I mean, it, it's similar to uh, you know another movie we just talked about where it's kind of hard to talk about because so much of it is visual, mm. um. And it's, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I would definitely recommend people see it because it, it is a one-of-a-kind, unique experience. And, you know, I can't necessarily guarantee, you know, people will not uh, like it or what kind of enjoyment you'll get out of it. But uh, to say the least, I, I think it's like nothing yet you've really seen before. Yeah, but one of the things we didn't mention is when Gorgeous is taken over uh, by the spirit or the house or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. It has this weird effect where her st her face kind of falls off as if it's if it's as if it's glass and it's cracked, and then oh, yeah. when the gla and when it falls off, the outline of her face is still there, but there's this fire effect inside her face, which is full oh, on yeah. David Lynch. It reminds me of something that David Lynch would do, <laughs> but just in a, a slightly goofier 
way. Yeah. Oh, we never mentioned that. the the cartoon train. When they're on the train, it cuts to the side view of the train. Oh yeah, it, it's a cartoon. <laughs> they do a cartoon sequence of the train moving. Oh yeah, there's a ton of like other stuff. Like there's a this is like one weird scene where the teacher like I don't know, gets stuck in a bucket and like falls down these stairs. <laughs> oh, that's right. And, and he spins around on the road, and he actually yeah. like spins and dodges away from a car, and then spins yeah. back out of the road. Like, it feels like, I, I don't know how they do that, but it feels like something they would have done in, like, Benny Hill or something. It, uh, it really, no, it does. It yeah. really does. Um, all right. <laughs> I guess I guess we need to rate this. Which, again, this is a weird thing to rate. Like, how do you rate House? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's super hard. Um, uh, geez. I think I'm going to give it a... You know, I, I think I'll, I'll go uh, a straight seven. I, I was thinking about going a little higher, but honestly, on, on the rewatch, I did find <laughs> some of the more normal parts to be, like, a little boring. Like, you know, in the beginning, uh, it was, like, a little, you know, slow for me. I, I don't like once they kind of get into that more, like, dramatic stuff, but mm. <clears throat> all the crazy stuff really works for me. And, uh, <laughs> again, it, yeah, it's really funny and uh yeah I, I mean i hesitate to again say if it's a good movie but an entertaining movie i will uh thousand percent agree to that did you give it a number oh uh yeah i think i'm gonna go straight seven right <laughs> i was like i don't remember a number in that, that whole I kinda, speech like yeah i, I kind of like i i'm tempted to go higher like i'm almost tempted to go like to an eight or something because like on an enjoyment level for me it's it's probably an eight but i just think you know if you're factoring like you know, craft wise and stuff. Yeah, you know, I gotta bring it down a, a little bit. Um, but yeah, I I like it. <laughs> I think I think I'm gonna go with a six because ultimately, as a little incoherent, <laughs> it's just, it's kind of this <laughs> yeah. messy, wacky thing. Um, but I I I, I kind of liked it. I think <laughs> I will say this: I do think it's something that everyone should see. I think it's an experience yeah. that everyone should should try. Whether or not it's actually any good, I I, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. I'm going with a six because mm. let's say it breaks even and there's good and there's bad and it works out to be in the middle. I think it's at least got enough craziness that it has to. It feels above average. It feels like you're in the positive. So I'll, I'll give think, it a six. Yeah, and at the at the bare minimum, you have to admit it's memorable. Like I doubt oh, yeah. you're gonna forget this anytime soon. Yeah, so just, uh, <laughs> so there you go. That's this house. Uh, yeah. cr crazy, crazy, crazy movie. Um, so that was that was the Patreon choice for the month. Um, do if you're a patron, do check the uh the Patreon page uh, over at patreon.com slash mailfuzz TV uh, if you want to support us over there. But if you are a patron, check because the voting will be up for the the next vote. Uh, right now, if it, if you haven't seen it and voted already, if you're not a patron, you can. That's one of the reasons why you should be a patron. You can go vote in that. Uh, you can also support us for a dollar a month over there. Uh, you can also buy merchandise now. We have a merch store, both a US and a UK store, to buy shirts and hoodies and all such uh, memorabilia, should you wish. So mm. you can go and have a look. Um, more shirt ideas coming too. There's more more designs and quotes that we're we're, we're discussing to roll out <laughs> over time. So. Don't worry, more on the way. Uh, but yeah, other than that, of course, even if you you know if you don't want to do it financially, you can support us, of course, in a number of ways, such as liking, subscribing, commenting. All these things do help. Mm -hmm. uh, sharing us on Twitter, all that kind of stuff. Uh, if I get us on Twitter at Screams Midnight, mm -hmm. so you can go do that. Uh, but that is otherwise. And, you know, uh, I, and yeah, and I, uh, actually, I forgot to mention this in the other episode, but you know, um. You, you guys, uh, not on the Screams uh, thing, but the, uh, like, on the comics Twitter and stuff, you guys were giving away, like, some digital codes and stuff, so that's a good yeah. incentive to follow things. Who knows, maybe maybe if we get, you know, some stuff for Screams, maybe we'll, uh, you know, <laughs> start, you know, giving away some stuff if people follow it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Tim, if you, if you get digital codes with your, 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 your movie buys that you don't want. Yeah, so... Yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see about that. Yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, that, that is that is pretty much us. Though. That that is House, which is was kind of a movie <laughs> experience. In, in a way, it was it was it was it was a movie in concept. 
if nothing else. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah. that that is that is. Um, so we'll be back soon. Uh, obviously, we've been doing a lot of catch up twenty eighteen movies recently. Uh, we're getting quite close now to our doing our, our top ten best and worst of twenty eighteen. Mm-hmm. Uh, that should be before the end of February. Uh, I'm not entirely sure when this is going up. It'll probably be fairly soon, though, because this was the January Patreon winner. So mm-hmm. it should actually be up probably by the end of January, maybe start of February at the latest. So look forward to to that um, and maybe think... Because, you know, we've got a few things we're going to make sure we check out before that time so that we've, we've definitely got the best and worst list that we can have, <laughs> if that makes sense. For best for the best and the worst for the worst. Um, yeah and so if there's any 2018 horror movies that you think we have overlooked or not got to yet that you would like to really encourage us to watch i'm not going to say we will because we we may not we may not have time (laughs) but if there's any 2018 horror movies that you think that we should check out because you think it would be in consideration for our top 10 uh do do make yourself heard in the comments uh, yeah you know yeah, I mean, horror is big now, and there's so many different streaming platforms and stuff. It, it's easy for uh, you know stuff to slip by every now and again. It absolutely is. Uh, for as yeah. much as we watch in a year, there's always stuff that I find out like a year or two later. Like, oh, we should have. How did we not see yeah. that at the time? How did we miss that at the time? Uh, yeah, like was... the, <laughs> like I don't do much else other than you know read comics and watch horror movies, and like I still get like, oh yeah, how the hell did this? Uh, you know, fly by me. I guess we probably should point out that yes, we will be doing Leprechaun Returns, but we are, we're going through the whole series. So I, I'm sure people are probably screaming at their, <laughs> yeah, iPhones or whatever <laughs> they're watching this on that they want us to do that. But it, it it will be coming. Yeah, I'm fairly certain that was not in contention for the top ten. Well, <laughs> uh, same with the, the the last Puppet Master as well. But we'll get to that when we do the whole series. Not, Ooh, not before. That'll be fun. Yeah, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so that is that has been Screams After Midnight. That has been a house. So thank you very much for, for watching and listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching scary movies, guys. And we will see you next. <laughs>